People are happier if they accept some core basic truths about life. Life will always have pain, uncertainty, and constant work. When people accept that, they're happier because they're prepared for it. There'll be pain, there'll be uncertainty, it'll take a lot of work, but it's worth it. The sooner you can start enjoying the process more and get higher results. As always, first comes the work, then comes the motivation. The more you prospect, the more you will close because you've shaken more hands and then you can make more money. And the more you commit to these principles, the more you will succeed because success is a long-term game. It is not a short-term endeavor. So today, we're going to talk about something, and it might be a little controversial. What I say isn't going to be an Instagram friendly or make people feel rainbows and cuddly inside. But when you get nearer to the truth, you can become more free. When I go through this call, remember, I'm not saying be a nihilist or a negative or a negative person or a pessimist. I'm not saying that. I'm saying be more of a realist. So with this disclaimer out of the way, everyone knows who Viktor Frankl is. He wrote Man's Search for Meaning, one of the most popular books. He was a Holocaust survivor. And there's you know people that went through all that and they talked about what they saw. And one of the things people observed that when others were going through the Holocaust, the big optimists were the ones that died first. Sounds a little crazy. They either killed themselves first, like they just run into the electric fence or whatever. They lost hope quicker. They struggled the most. And it sounds weird, right? Because we're told optimism. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be good. Be an optimist. Be positive about everything. But here's the thing. The optimist would say, we'll be free. By Christmas, we'll be free. Christmas would come and they'd still be in hell. We've talked about the pendulum effect in cells before, right? Like people swing back and forth. So if you get them too amped and then you leave the cell, they'll swing negative. So you want to leave them neutral, right? Same thing within life. Who do you think felt worse after Christmas? The ones that thought they would be free for sure? Or the ones like, hey, maybe we might still be here. Who felt worse? It was the optimist. And again, I'm not saying be negative, but they wanted to believe in this fantasy. They held on to these grandiose ideas and they just let down when it didn't come true. It's a bit crazy, right? Like, where the hell is he going with this? But everything we've been told seems like optimists win. And again, I'm not saying be pessimistic. I'm not saying be negative. You want to be positive. You want to have optimism. I'll get to my point a bit later, but just hold on. But I had a similar experience. When I first got Lyme, I'd always get so excited. I'd try a new treatment, hoping to manifest the outcome on or whatever, be positive about it working. And then I would get red. It hurts to fall like that. I'm like, oh, I'm going to finally be cured. And then, boom, nope, you're still there, buddy. Right After a while, I had to start to learn to stay even kill. I would try stuff, but I wouldn't be so attached to the result. Otherwise, I'd just get dangerously low. And I'm talking dangerously low. Let's just be real here. And throughout all that, I had to develop what I call realistic thinking. Just like the Holocaust survivors, I wasn't going to be pessimistic, but I was going to be realistic. I wasn't going to lose hope and say, it'll never get better. Might as well drink some vodka and smoke some meth, right? I, I don't know if those two things go together, but no, that's not it. it but it, was all, it wasn't, this new treatment so, so sounds so great. This is the best. I'm going to be cured in a few weeks. Woo, no doubt. Dead ass or whatever people say. No, because that fall hurts too much. Because if it doesn't work, you're coming down, right? It was more, hey, it'd be cool if this works. It might not be cool, but it might not. Either way. I'm prepared for this battle long-term if necessary. It takes me one year, five years, 10 years. I'm committed. See the difference? It's not being negative. It's being prepared and even keel. How many salespeople do you know ride that up and down wave? They're doing really good and they're doing really bad. And it just wrecks them. It's common. So here's the other thing. How many people get into solar, hear about someone making all this money, and then they, they've only been doing this for a month, two months, three months, and then they're bummed. They're not making $50,000 a month, right? Did that person come in with the right expectations? Are they being realistic? Or are they being like the optimist that thinks they're going to make 50 grand by week two? It took me a straight year to start selling over 20 deals in a month. And that was working 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every single damn day for an entire year, like probably obsessed to an unhealthy, weird level. So why do you expect to have instant results, especially if you've only been knocking 200 doors a week? You're not even knocking at least 500 a week. You've been doing that for a month. You're not just going to make all this crazy money. It takes time. You don't be negative about it, but this is a full-time gig and there's no opportunity that's just going to hand you out 50 grand a month without paying your dues. Don't be negative about it. 
but don't be all crazy positive. Like you think you're just going to make all this money and you're like, oh, I'm not making 50 grand a month. I knocked a thousand doors this month. Where, why am I not rich? It doesn't work like that. I know there are a lot of people making really good money in solar. I know I have what it takes, but there might be a bumpy road ahead. I'm committed to hit my income target no matter how hard it it is, how long it takes. If I get there fast, sweet. But if it takes me a while, that's cool too. See the power in that? That's different. Mm, that's different. I, I feel it even just saying it. It isn't negative. It's not far from reality, but it's strong and it's committed. Same thing with referrals. If you show up and think, oh yeah, referral appointment, it's going to be so easy. And then they open the door, they go, um, so we're not really interested. Uh, we don't plan on signing anything today. We have two other quotes coming, but sure, come tell us what you got. Now what happens? Oh, no. Oh, my God. I would rather approach every referral like it's going to be the hardest sell I ever do. I got all my routines. I'm framing my confidence before I get there. I'm prepared. I'm going to go in the app. I'm going to not skip a single step. And then guess what? They're easy, sweet, but they're hard, perfect. That's what I was prepared for. See the difference? The one sets you up to swing hard the other way. The other one's prepared for any circumstance. Oh, nice. It was easy. <laughs> They're ready to sign. The referrer sold them. Cool. Here we go. But hey, it's hard. Yeah, I was ready for that. That's the difference. By the way, to prove you watch this, uh, email info at directslow.energy and in the subject line, put door-to-door -door is easier than the Holocaust. Then we know we actually watched it. All right. In the book, The Tools, it's now popular because Jonah Hill um, did a whole Netflix show about the therapist, right? He says, people are happier if they accept some core basic truths about life. Life will always have pain, uncertainty, and constant work. And when people accept that, they're happier because they're prepared for it. If you want a pain-free life, well, sounds paradoxical, but there's a lot of pain associated with avoiding pain. I've caused myself more pain probably by trying to avoid the pain than the pain actually was painful. Knocking doors might be painful, so you avoid it. But the whole day you feel tense and uneasy because you can't really relax because you know you're supposed to be knocking doors. You have stuff on your to-do list. So the whole day sort of sucks anyways. And then you're not making any money and then you can't pay your bills. Well, that's painful. But if you learn to love pain, you go and face those doors. You want the hard no. You feed off of it. Well, guess what? That pain isn't so painful and it's actually kind of fun, right? Those no's become fun. Same thing with the gym. I'm one of those people that I loved heavy deadlifts and squats when I can't wait to do those again. I didn't understand why people skip leg day. But then I learned like people don't like that feeling. They see it as pain. I just thought that was the feeling that comes with it, and I like the feeling. So luckily, I was not those people that avoid leg day. So if you learn to like the feeling and it isn't painful, now the gym's fun and less painful. Uncertainty. If you want certainty, you're going to cause yourself a lot of stress because especially in today's world, we got AI about to take over our freaking souls. There is no certainty. I used to battle severely, especially in sales, because really a lot of the process can be out of our control. Especially when you're closing a deal for a new person that if you don't close it, they can't pay their rent. My baby's on the way. Uh, if you don't close this, I'm not paying the hospital bills. You're like, oh my God. It'd be nice to have some certainty, but you don't. I can control my behavior, but I can't 100% predict the outcome of what will happen. So there's two things to realize from, that I have learned for myself for the uncertainty of sales. Whenever I'd show up to an appointment, I'd tell myself, cool, I got a 70% chance of making 4,000 bucks. What an amazing opportunity. I'll control what I can control. I'll swing that bat. I'll give this my absolute best. And if I do that, then the results will fall where they may. Second thing is to learn to love it because the thrill of uncertainty is exactly what makes this exciting. It's not fun if you just know like they already signed up and you just have to go do another signature and just go and you 100% get the sale every time. It's fun because you walk in, you get hit with all sorts of stuff. We're not signing today. We don't want a solar. Boom, boom, boom. You start doubting yourself. Oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to get this. And you pull through and then I, boom, I, I got the deal, right? And you leave. That's why it's fun. The uncertainty is why it's fun. So just learn to love it. Last is constant work. Once you build a pipeline, you still need to maintain it. Anything nice that you buy, you have to maintain it. If you make a ton of money and buy investments, there's going to be work to manage those investments. No matter what, there's always going to be work. There's always work in life. And once you accept that, you can learn to love the work. I didn't feel like making this video. As soon as I started doing it, oh, I, I liked it. All right, I don't feel that good today, but I know if I avoided doing this, it would just be more painful than to just do it because the work is, is always there. When you learn to love the work itself, well, now you're enjoying what you're doing. We spend a lot of our time working, if not most of our time, or if you're me, like your whole life. But if you're enjoying what you're doing, you're enjoying your, your life, right? And that's the whole goal anyways. You want to enjoy yourself. 
And if you learn to enjoy the work, well, now you're enjoying your life. What I'm getting at with this whole thing is the more you accept reality, the better life paradoxically becomes versus trying to like make it something else or be all optimistic and avoid the pain. When you can look direct sales right in the eye and you see it exactly for what it is and you face it head on and you know what's coming, it's going to be a lot smoother, right? Get all this fantasy out of your brain. There is no quick fix. Get rich quick. Be prepared to get rich slow. It might take a while, but it's worth it. The sooner you accept these raw truths, there will be pain. There'll be uncertainty. It'll take a lot of work, but it's worth it. The sooner you can start enjoying the process more and get higher results and enjoy your, your life more. And then come Christmas time, instead of being locked up in one of those camps for yet another year, you'll be able to enjoy yourself fully with your friends and family, knowing you gave it your all this year and you didn't just avoid pain the entire year and you actually went for it.